So with that, Suhan, are you ready? Suhan Marcini is. She's not in her head. <laughs> there you go. Now you got it off mute. Suhan Marcini, an impromptu speech. Are just taking the timer. One second. It's far as his Venetian blinds to her left. Well, Who's the timer on the system? Vara. <clears throat> He's logged oh, in. Okay. Yeah, the one that says timer. Sorry, I found you. Cool. You can wave your hand. Have you been in a situation bombarded by unexpected family slash annoying work situations where you got really annoyed, then you had a meeting, not Toastmasters, and you had to sit down and then discover that you had a speech scheduled and you're not ready? Have you? Of course you have. This is life. On one of those days, I call them special days, I was in the library, the lowest mood you can imagine, to know that I'm scheduled to be a speaker and it was the last thing I wanted to do. Someone preached in at the time, it was John Morris. Thank you, John. And what speech did he give? To take the opportunity next time and to give the speech anyway. You can't imagine my first impression. Like, what? But later when I thought about it, it was interesting. And from that day onward, even if they ask or not, even if I discover last minute that they need a speaker, I would be like, me, 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 me. Now I'm at my background. I'm not so deep into Toastmasters yet because I cannot count years. It's only one year and a half or so. But I had the blessing to be in a contest and I got some work done there. And I'm here today to share with you a teeny tiny secret formula of how to prepare a speech and give it in less than 30 minutes. Now, <clears throat> the formula is called Tosi Plak. I know. To C S I P L A C. To C black. And why do I write it like this on the piece of paper? For one good reason. You would write the letters at the beginning on the side just to mark the beginning of the line. And then they will be your leader. What am I saying? You won't start from the top. T stands for title. O stands for opening. You leave those till the end for what inspires you to have the best. You start with the story. What story do you have to tell? And if nothing jogs your mind, remember one that you keep telling without planning to. Might be something that bothered you, something that made you happy, feel special, anything. Or maybe you have a list of them, jog down. So once you catch this story, you start plotting it. You write only two bullet things about it. You're gonna talk about this, and this happened in the story, not much. Then you have to have a story with an influencer. Turns out when you tell a story and you're the hero, boring, <laughs> shouldn't be much about you. Just to have it with flavor, you know, like, ooh, influence. Next, the story happened, the hero did something. What was the problem solved? When it was something bothering you and you told the story, it was aching, ding, 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 poking. So perhaps there was a lesson there 
And this is your next one. L, lesson learned. A is what we like in Toastmasters, call of action. Go and do this and that and see if it works. <laughs> As for the C, I added recently. I remembered once when I closed with a quote and it was interesting. And I remembered a long time ago when I closed with a song. And the, the words rhymed with my subject. And it's really influential. If people would forget your speech, they might still remember a hint about it from your closing. That said, let me show you what happened exactly today. <clears throat> this is my Tosiplak of the day. So I left the T and the O for later. By the way, you can't read, it's vice versa, right? I'm sorry about that. Pretend you are reading. Because <laughs> I'm gonna read it for you. In the S, I read or I wrote when John stepped up and gave his speech about me not speaking, but he was very sweet. So he's not the guilty one. He's my hero. And then I go and I influence it in the influencer, the I, and you thought. So when someone advises you doing something, it's regular. Don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this. But that day, because I had to listen, <laughs> didn't get the chance to comment much. I had a spare moment to think, what do I have to lose? It's not like someone would say, hey, you gave a back pocket speech and it was horrible. It will never happen. For the P, that's my problem solution. I was able to overcome an obstacle because let's face it, what are the odds of always you being prepared when you need to give a back pocket speech? It's very little, very little. Yet, consider it like when you have a bad thought and you have a very nice thin light at the end of a tunnel. Something good. As for my L, which is the lesson learned, better chance to develop. And then I put the letters in red. Do you read that? Stress. I do understand. You'll be having a lot of stress thinking about that. It doesn't make sense. You're learning public speaking because you have an issue there. I get it. This is why I'm here to tell you that stress is good for you. What? Yes, it is. This speaker, TED Talk, talks about 18 minutes to tell you that stress is good for you. I highly urge you to see this talk. I can't read her last name. And last but not least, I'll leave you with this. If you cannot go back and change the beginning, you can start where you are and change the ending. Back to you. It was, I was due to evaluate Suat's speech last week, but I guess the universe conspires when I'm supposed to do something, it eventually happens. Suad, wonderful speech. I loved how you jumped in. You did show your bravery. And I loved your use of symbolism and the analogies that you drew from the past into your speech. Most importantly, I think I have, I definitely have to point out the fact that you went in for a swift change into your professional wear, which amplified the power and the message that you had to convey uh, through your speech. Wonderful job on that. And you also chose a quite relevant topic, which is, why it's necessary to jump in and how you can create any situation, any impromptu situation, tangible, and you can tackle it with utmost ease. So you also gave us an amazing blueprint to follow and you inspired us. You pushed us to jump into the deep end the next time there is an open spot for the speaker and we're asked to speak. And I'm sure every one of us, each one of us is gonna remember the Tosi plaque 
acronym mnemonic that you gave to us to follow for our next speech. And the way you broke it down was also quite helpful. And most importantly, how you accompany everything that the message that you have to deliver with your enthusiasm and your facial expressions. It just shows how jo jovial of a person you are. So there's not, never a dull moment when you're speaking. And you're also quite impromptu with the props that you use. You had something as a means to provide food for thought for the audience in the form of the TED Talk, as well as the quote that you ended with, which was also, again, symbolic of the Tosi Plax C that you mentioned, which was having an impactful conclusion. And when you said that people are tend to recall and retain in their minds mostly the end of a person's speech. I was taken to the recency effect in psychology, which is where people do tend to adhere to, you know, impactful ends, impactful statements, impactful conclusions that they then can formulate a more powerful image of the entire speech with. So that was a very, very impactful, a quite imp impactful um advice that you had to give, and most importantly, the symbolism that you used by showing how John was your hero back in one of the Toastmaster meetings. Today, you symbolized yourself as the hero for us all, and you inspired us all to give a speech whenever there's one open in the near future. As for critiques, I don't think I have anything, and it, would, it wouldn't be just justifiable for me to critique any aspect of your speech tonight, because you did a very brave task by jumping in and giving a speech. So great work. And I definitely look forward to hearing more from you.